Therefore, receive Christ Jesus the Lord. So, walk in Him. How did you receive Jesus Christ the Lord? By the hearing of faith. How do you walk in Him? By the hearing of faith. So the just shall live. We walk and not exactly the same way it came is the same way it is maintained. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Not in the liberty wherewith Christ will make us free. He hath already made us free. Because salvation and eternal life and walk with God and walking in God is his walk. It is not your walk. It is his walk. This only, he's talking to the church at Galatia. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Look at how he described faith. Hearing. Hearing of faith, not works of faith. Hearing. Faith is a hearing. Am I teaching? Yeah. The gospel supplies faith. The gospel does not demand. Rather, the gospel supplies. Because if the gospel should demand, nobody has the word without to supply what the gospel would demand. In the first place, that's why Christ came. In the first place, that's why God became a man. Because man does not have the wherewithal to supply what God will, will demand. So God came down as a man and made the supplies on behalf of man. And all man is required to do is to hear the message. And by hearing the message, all that he has done is released into the man. So we are products of his finished work. We are products of of his finished work. Thank you Jesus. We are products of what Christ has done. So this only will I learn of you. Receiving the spirit by the works of the law. Or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish? Now he qualifies their foolishness. First of all he calls them Foolish. Then the thing entered him more. He now qualifies their folly. Are you so foolish? You are not just foolish. Now it has graduated from foolish to so foolish. That sounds like a pastor. <laughs> Brother Paul was the pastor of the church in Galatia. So he's a pastor who after teaching them the message... Just because he traveled on a missionary journey, by the time he came back, they had brought in 15 steps, 25 steps, how to make it. Who stole my wedding gown? Where is my wedding shoe? Who stole my goat? Huh? I am designed for the city, but tied in the village. I saw that somewhere and said, oh my goodness. Designed for the city, tied in the village. Who tied you? Who tied you? That means you're not born again. Because the day you got born again, it was a movement from one kingdom to another. Those are not messages for believers. Those are messages for, 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 for non-believers. And they're not even messages. Designed for the city. Tied in the village. Another gospel. <laughs> Another gospel. Praise the Lord. Another gospel. In the gospel, you don't do anything. You only receive. The message of Christ is about receiving. So that's why I said to them, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? What spirit? What spirit did they begin in? They began with the spirit of life in Christ or the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father or the spirit that raised Christ from the dead or the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The spirit of adoption. 
the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the spirit of the the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, they began in the spirit, and now they want to be perfected in the flesh. And what is being perfected by the flesh walks, walks. What I can offer, what I can do. He said, "You're fool." In fact, he didn't say you're foolish. He said, "You're so foolish." How can you a man toli mananga gagolo shikia? This has been in my spirit all day long. How can you maintain what you didn't have the ability to obtain? No, it's a very simple question. How can you maintain what in the first place you didn't have the ability to obtain? You couldn't obtain salvation. You are broke. You don't have what it takes. So now how, if you couldn't obtain it, how can you maintain it? Salvation is of God. From A to Z, salvation is of God. He is the author, he is the finisher. He is the author of eternal salvation. Teyana, leave that in. He is the author of eternal salvation. He is the author of eternal salvation. Glory to God. Thank you Jesus for grace. Songwriter say thank you Jesus. For the grace that you have given me. Help me now. I could. Exactly. Exactly. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. You can never repay. You are 300 days of fasting. It's not enough. I could never repay. So instead of trying to repay, relax. Receive what he has offered and be thankful. I could never repay. But from my heart, I like to say thank you. The gospel doesn't demand, the gospel supplies. Am I communicating? How can you? He said, Are you so foolish? You began by hearing. Abi? You began the journey by hearing. This only will I learn of you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. How did you begin the journey? By the hearing of faith. You started by the hearing of faith. Hey. That's how you started. And that is how you continue. And that is how you finish. By the hearing of faith. Colossians 2.8, we'll come back to Galatians quickly. Beware, lest any man spoil you. Who has bewitched you? The bewitcher is a man. Who is a bewitcher? Is a man. Maybe with a collar and a big chain. Okay. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rumors of the world, and not after Christ. Go back to verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. How did you receive Jesus Christ the Lord? By the hearing of faith. How do you walk in him? By the hearing of faith. So the just shall live, we walk, and not exactly. The same way it came is the same way it is maintained. It's a work of God. It's a work of God. When you understand this, you just enter rest straight. You just cease from labor. You just cease from works. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. You can never do anything to make Jesus undo what he has done. There's nothing you can do to undo what Christ has done. He did a perfect job. And that job is eternal. So Romans 10, 17, faith commit by hearing. Hearing the message of Christ. Hearing the message of Christ. So Christ brings faith. Faith to believe comes from the message. Hebrews 12 through looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. The author and finisher 
of faith. The Old Testament people's faith was faith in things. Our faith is not in things. Our faith is in him. They had to have faith in things because they were under the shadow. They didn't have the substance. That's what they kept looking for. They never got. They kept looking till they died. But when we came, we came where the substance is already available. So we began with our faith in him. Not in it. You are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2, 7, 8 and 9. You are saved by grace through faith. Now salvation by grace through faith is called the gift of God. What is it called? The gift of God. Do you work for a gift? Hello? Do you work for a gift? A gift is freely given. You are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. It's not what you deserve. It's not what you earn. It's not a reward. It is a gift freely given to us. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. Saved by grace through faith is the gift of God. Ephesians 2.10 You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You are his workmanship. You are the handwork of God. Say with me, I am a product of the finished work of Christ Jesus. Yeah. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. New birth is God's making. There is nothing you can do to be born again. You can only receive what he has done to be born again. Of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. James 1.18 of his own will begat he us by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. Of his own will. It is God's making. We are his workmanship. We are his handiwork. We are the products of the finished work of Christ. Paul is saying at what point do you want to add to what Christ has done? Are you so foolish? How many of you the way you are right now if you eat a drum of rice, it will produce a second heart in your body. There is no amount of food you can eat that will make your heart too. Why? You were made that way. What you do and what you don't do cannot change the way you were made. We are his workmanship. That is how we have been made. We are God's handiwork. What we do and what we don't do cannot change what he has done. Am I teaching good here? Where is workmanship? We are not our workmanship. If we were our workmanship, we can improve on ourselves. But we are his workmanship created where? In Christ Jesus. If any man be where? In Christ. That's the work of God. That's the complete work of God. And there's nothing anybody can do to improve on it. Somebody say, are you saying we shouldn't fast? Did I say so? Some say, are you saying we shouldn't pray? Did I say so? So, hear me and hear what I am saying. And leave what I am not saying. And wait for when I will say it. You can't teach everything in one day. It's precept upon precept. So understand this. When we get there, it will be easy for you to understand that one. Why is work much? We are not praying to please God. We are praying because he is already pleased. There's nothing you can do to please God. God already told you his pleasure. <laughs> Amen. This is my beloved son in whom twice God spoke twice. My pleasure is my son. My pleasure is my son. Nothing else gives me pleasure. Only my son. So the day Jesus came into you, what came into you? The pleasure of God. So when God sees Jesus in you, what does he get out of you? Pleasure. So don't try to give God pleasure. Just allow Christ in you to be fully made manifest by revelation. And God is pleased. Teaching good here. Jesus is God's pleasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is God's pleasure. Jesus pleases the Father. 
Colossians 2.10 says you are complete in him. You are complete in him. Which is the head of all principalities and powers. John 1.16 says of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. You don't add to God's work. Of his fullness. What did we do? What did we do? We all have received. What did we do? We received. Where did we receive from? His fullness. Did we add to his fullness? No. What did we do to his fullness? We received. The gospel does not demand. The gospel only supplies. The gospel only supplies. The gospel doesn't demand. Praise the Lord. So what is spiritual growth? Spiritual growth is to work in who you are in Christ Jesus. Spiritual growth means the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus is getting clearer in your understanding and because you are understanding who you are in Christ Jesus, it is affecting your work. It's affecting your work. Remember? Right believing produces right living. You don't live right until you believe right. It is what you believe that you produce. Right believing produces right living. But right believing is a product of right hearing. Right hearing. How can they hear? Except there's a preacher. Right hearing will produce right believing that will manifest in right living. Very important. Don't turn the, the priority. Don't begin with right living. Start with right hearing. Then when a man starts hearing right, he will start thinking right. When a man starts thinking right without effort, he will start living right. You are a product of what you think. As a man think it? Exactly. And your thinking is informed by your hearing. Wrong believing, wrong living. And wrong believing is a product of wrong hearing. That's why the Bible says, take heed how you hear. You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. Galatians 3, 6, as I begin to round, are you blessed tonight? Somebody blessed, shall blessed. Galatians 3, 6. Even as Abraham believed God. What did he do? He believed. And what happened to that? It was accounted to him. He just believed God. He didn't do anything. The moment he believed God, righteousness. No effort. Why? The gospel does not demand. The gospel only supplies. And you know, that place where Paul is quoting from in Galatians is from Genesis 15.6. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. To have rightness or to have righteousness or right standing before God. Not by works but by the faith of the gospel. By the faith of the gospel. So Romans 5 1 says therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God. When you read the book of Galatians, you must read the book of Romans. They walk hand in hand. Galatians and Romans are twins. So Paul now begins to tell the Jewish people. Watch this. He tells the Jewish people, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We are not Jews. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We are not Jews. It was out of Jacob. Twelve tribes came out that formed a nation called Israel. So Abraham was not a Jew. The nation called Israel came out of the 12 children of Jacob. Are you here? Hmm. So Abraham was righteous without circumcision. Because circumcision is Jewish. And Abraham was not a Jew. And under the Jewish laws, you must be circumcised for you to be accepted. But Abraham wasn't circumcised to be righteous. Now I know some people who don't listen. 
will suddenly begin to say, but Abraham was circumcised. Yes, when was he circumcised? Genesis 17. He has already been declared righteous in Genesis 15. So it was not the circumcision that made him righteous. He was righteous without works. That's what the gospel supplies. It was not circumcision to be righteous. Because he was righteous, he decided to be circumcised. So he can identify. The gospel doesn't demand. The gospel supplies. I'm teaching good here. So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, then Israel. Okay? Then Israel now went into captivity for close to 100 years. Then out of Egypt, as they were living captivity, on the way to the promised land was where the law was given. So that means until then there was no law. Yet they were righteous. Yes, sir. Without observing any law. Without keeping any law. Without keeping any ten commandments. Without observing anything. They were righteous. Can you see the height of hypocrisy? When Peter was putting up that defense. He said, why put we a greater burden on these Gentiles? A burden that neither our fathers nor we ourselves could keep. That means they were making people do what they themselves could not do, which is hypocrisy. And they admitted it, that our fathers and ourselves, we couldn't keep it. Why do we, that, what Peter was telling is, all of us here are hypocrites. Because what we are trying to force the Gentiles to do, all of us here have broken the law. None of us can keep it. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. If God bypass our Jewish laws and got them baptized with the Holy Ghost, without any of them observing these things, who are we to stop God? Leave these people alone. It is called righteousness without works. What is it called? That is what we call the blessing. What is the blessing? The blessing is God looking at you in your disqualified status and then he smiles and says, because of what I have done, take it for free. You are righteous. That's the blessing. What's the blessing? Righteousness without works. That's the blessing there. So why put on them a greater body? A body that we have been struggling with with our grandfathers. All of us cannot carry it. Then you now want to put it on these people? Leave them alone. That is the hypocrisy of legalism. That is the hypocrisy of legalism. Where you find legalists, hypocrisy. Praise the Lord. So before the Old Testament, there was a nation called Israel without the law. Before the Old Testament, there was a nation called Israel Without the law. So Romans 5 1 now says. Being justified. The word justified means. To be treated as though you have not done any wrong. God treats you. As though you have never done any wrong. Therefore being justified by faith. We have. Somebody shout I have. Somebody shout I have. Shout it loud I have peace with God. Romans chapter 4 verse 1 as I close. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. If you are a staff in my office and you walk, and at the end of the month I walk to you and I give you your paycheck 75,000 naira. You don't kneel down and start saying, there is none holy as you. For giving you 75,000, that's what you deserve. Even if you don't tell me thank you, it's not going to change anything. You are just collecting what you worked for. But if I walk to you, you didn't work anything, you didn't do anything, I just met you on the road and I gave you 75,000. What will you do? You will thank me with, with, with three hands. Thank you. Pa, pa, pa. Thank you. Three hands. One, two, three. Why? Because I gave you what you don't deserve. It's called charis. It's called chesed. 
It's called Chen. It's called Chenan. Loving kindness. God looked at you and said, you don't have what it takes. But anyway, take it anyhow. That's the grace of God. Amen. Amen. If Abraham got it by works, he has whereof to glory. He could brag about it. For what say of the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He just believed. Is there a believer in this church? You're righteous. Next verse. Now to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. If you have to work for it, it is your salary. But to him that walketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Alright? Next verse. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Who is that blessed man? The blessed man is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He didn't say the man that doesn't have sin. No, he said the man has sin, but the Lord will not impute it. That's a blessing there. If you are blessed, jump on your feet and shout, I am blessed. Say, I believe without works, I am saved. Say it again, I believe without works, I am saved, sanctified, justified, saved, sanctified, justified, eternally. Amen. Amen. Blessed. Amen. Who is blessed? Amen. Blessed. Why are you blessed? Is it because you did something? Because he did something. Your blessing is a product of the finished work. Your sanctification is a product of the finished work. Your justification is a product of what he has done. Blessed. Amen. Justified. Sanctified. Saved. For how long? Amen. Forever. Glory to God. That's a place to just make some noise here too. That's a place to just make some noise. Oh, I said that's a place to make some noise. Oh, I said that's a place to make some noise. Glory. 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 Where is the glory? Where is the glory? Where is the glory? Is it coming from the sky? Where is the glory? It's on your inside. Who is the glory? Jesus is the glory. We see the glory of God. We are in the face of Jesus. So Christ in you. You are called to glory and virtue. You will not be ashamed. If your amen is louder, you are far from shame. What embarrasses others will gather together and celebrate you. Somebody shout, I'm free from shame. I'm free from embarrassment. I am called to a glorious life. He is glorified. I am glorified with him. He is seated. I am seated with him. His authority is my authority. His position is my position. I am in him justified. He is in me glorified. I thought some believer will get excited and give him praise in this place.